Over the decades, the weather hasn't changed as much as describing it and showing it to you on TV has. Sixty years ago, describing and showing weather was as simple as black and white. News 5 Chief Meteorologist Alan Seals reports. On the morning of WKRG's first broadcast, September 5, 1955, it was 72 degrees with a light north wind. Weather data was measured at the airport, Bates Field. In the meantime, there was a low in the southwestern Gulf, but not much data along with it. There were no satellites until 1960, and even by the mid-1960s, satellite images were pretty crude. There was no radar network until the 1960s, and the early displays were black and white and fuzzy. Data was lacking for Channel 5 weather forecasters like Kevin O'Neill. Well before computers, he had a board and a grease pencil to draw maps. Gary Godwin had a few more visuals with regional data provided by the Weather Bureau. While the mid-1960s brought clunky computers to government meteorologists, TV weather presenters like Tommy Young could only wait for such technology. It was not until the middle 1970s that the first geostationary satellite was launched. While Steve Peterman was near the end of the hand-drawn map era, as Bob Stewart started, color weather radar was made available to television. Here's Bob in 1987. Here's the satellite picture. With an early computer display of a satellite. He was on the cutting edge. As we progressed through the 1990s, people like Jerry Huff eventually got a 24-bit graphics computer. Since then, technology has taken us by storm. Sixty years after simple display boards and markers, we have more than a dozen computers to help us forecast and give you the weather. Wow, we've come a long way, Alan Seals. <laughs> but we still have a long way to go. People expect weather to be perfect, but you know in life the future is always a little bit uncertain. Now let me show you some new technology. We show you satellites all the time. Well, you know what's unique about this one? It's taken at night by the light of the full moon, or the nearly full moon. That's the Pacific Ocean. And if you look closely, right in the middle, it's the Hawaiian Islands. 